Here's your Forbes Daily Briefing for Tuesday, April 2nd. Today on Forbes, meet the billionaire bond investor behind Chelsea FC, Springsteen's songbook, and the LA Dodgers. It's just after sunset, ahead of one of Hollywood's biggest events, the 81st annual Golden Globe Awards. And billionaire investor Todd Boley, the 50-year-old co-founder and CEO of the $70 billion in assets, Eldridge Industries, is heading to the venue. Dressed in a black Henley and blue jeans, he bypasses the red carpet and breezes past security on his way to the International Ballroom of the Beverly Hilton, where the team at Dick Clark Productions awaits. Inside, 20 video cameras and an array of stage lights are strategically stationed to ensure they can quickly zoom onto the faces of the night's A-list attendees, whose names are plastered on large white cardboard cutouts positioned around the banquet tables. Taylor Swift is center-right. Oprah Winfrey, Steven Spielberg, and Bradley Cooper are to the left of the main stage, while Pedro Pascal and Timothy Chalamet are seated to their right. On stage, a non-cardboard Kate Beckinsale is wearing sparkly platform sneakers while rehearsing her presenter lines with Don Cheadle. Foley seems oblivious to the bustle as a staffer goes over details of the next night's agenda. A shrill ring from his phone interrupts prominent actor-producer is fuming over his assigned table. With his graying blonde hair slicked to the side, Boley pauses and looks up. Dismissing the micro-crisis, he says, quote, I have teams that handle this stuff. If anything, this is a good sign that we're on the way back. If the billionaire bond investor turned Hollywood mogul is feeling any pressure at the moment, it would be understandable. In 2021, the Golden Globes were investigated over corruption and a lack of black voting members at its owner, the nonprofit Hollywood Foreign Press Association, or HFPA. Tinseltown boycotted the awards ceremony, Tom Cruise returned his trophies, and the show spent 2022 off the air. In January 2023, it returned to NBC for a one-year probationary run that delivered an underwhelming 6.3 million viewers, down from 18.4 million in 2020 according to Nielsen. During the imbroglio, Boley's maneuvering was masterful. With the Globe's popularity at a low and Hollywood actors and writers on strike, he went into distressed investor mode. In 2021, he got himself named interim CEO of the HFPA, then led a restructuring that transferred the Globe's intellectual property to a for-profit entity. His holding company, Eldridge Industries, already owned a piece of the show's producer, Dick Clark Productions, later joined by Penske Media. In June 2023, six months before the next awards ceremony, Boley and Penske acquired the Globes outright. Under Jay Penske's leadership, they sold media rights to CBS and Paramount Plus for six years. Nielsen reported that the 2024 Golden Globes, which aired January 7th, garnered 9.5 million viewers, a 51% increase over last year. The incremental growth was good enough for Boley, whose Eldridge holdings also include Oscar-winning film distribution and production company A24, which took home three globes that night for Beef, a Netflix miniseries starring Ali Wong. Since forming Eldridge in 2015, Boley has amassed a trove of more than 100 companies, including many in entertainment and sports, worth $10 billion. Among them, betting site DraftKings, Dick Clark's Rock and Eve, Bruce Springsteen's Song Catalog, The Beverly Hilton, fintech unicorn Stash, and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Through a separate entity, Bluco, Boley is part of a group that bought Chelsea FC, the British soccer club, from Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich for $3 billion in 2022. Forbes estimates Boley's net worth to be $6.1 billion, up $1.6 billion since 2022. As his empire expands and becomes more studded with stars and celebrity athletes, Boley always keeps Topeka, Kansas at the back of his mind. That's home base for Security Benefit Life, the $52 billion annuity specialist that provides the cash for Eldridge's growth. Like Warren Buffett, Boley uses the dependable cash thrown off from the insurance operation to buy up assets. But unlike Buffett, who prefers mundane businesses like truck stops and ketchup, Boley has applied the formula to glitzier sectors. Money can't always buy wins, as he's learning after two dismal years as the owner of Chelsea FC, but it can buy eyeballs on a screen, which is mostly what matters after you've sold the media rights, and the ultimate goal is generating the kind of income that allows the holders of retirement annuities to sleep soundly at night.
For full coverage and to read about Bowley's backstory, check out Manita Huja and Hank Tucker's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.